Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. In this series, we're going to talk about the Unified Talk phone system. I know, I know, land-based phone systems aren't a sexy topic, but I guarantee this system has some surprises up its sleeve, including video calls over SIP. But before we can get to that point, we have to do the initial setup. So let's go ahead and dive in. So, who do I think the Unified Talk VoIP system is for? I'd say a small business on a budget or someone looking for a home phone system that already has the Unified ecosystem. There are some powerful features in the system, but in my opinion, it is only cost effective for 10 or fewer phones. If you don't have a store.ui.com account, you will need one to order a phone or purchase a device elsewhere. A bit of warning though. Scalpers are jacking up the prices of these phones everywhere. So it may be best to register on the site and apply to be notified when devices are available. On Ubiquity's site, they boast the service as easily scalable, including 3,000 monthly minutes for inbound calls regardless of origin and outbound calls within the US, Canada, and Mexico. This is included as a per phone number package at about $9 per line. They also boast a deep inventory of local phone numbers validated as spam free with support for transferring your existing phone numbers to Unified Talk. They also claim unlimited free calls to local extensions, but that's pretty standard since those calls take place inside the network. More on that in a later video. They also support emergency calling service and state no contracts, no commitments, as well as the option to cancel at any time. After you use your 3,000 minutes in the month, it's only two cent a minute for each additional minute, and international calls start at one cent a minute, depending upon the country. All of this sounds fine, right? But the first major catch, at least at the time of recording, is that you will need a unified device to access the unified talk portion of the console. Okay, now that we have gotten the homework out of the way, let's go ahead and set up a phone and get service activated. So now that you have your Unified device plugged in and have logged into your console, select Setup under Unified Talk. Okay, so now that we're at this screen, we're gonna go ahead and click I Agree to Terms of Service, and then you can click on the Start Setup button here. Unified Talk is going to start to register the module, and then in a second it should bring us to this screen where we can see our UTP Flex, which is the device we're using. Looks like it automatically assigns it to the primary user on the account. And then all the way to the right, you have an option for area codes where you can scroll through different cities and states as the zip codes apply. Now, the zip code I'm looking for isn't immediately available, so I try the city that I live, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna try a closer city, that's not gonna work. So then my alternative option is to try a major city. However, that zip code is still within the range of where I live, so we're gonna go with that zip code. You're gonna hit the checkbox right here, and then hit next down at the bottom. And at this screen, you're gonna enter your emergency service information. I'm just gonna try my address here so the area I live in is fairly new and I'm almost sure this isn't going to work but we'll give it a shot anyway and then we're going to put in the zip code and I should get in there yep so it says invalid address so you may have to see how your address is registered. My address is registered under a different uh, city name due to the fact that the way my neighborhood was uh, annexed as part of a new subdivision, it was basically transferred over to a different city area. So from this point, I have to actually put in the different city and the zip code that corresponds with that city in Google Maps or whatever map service you use. And then from there, what I'm gonna have to do later is actually uh, register 
my area with uh, the E911 with the local municipality. You may have to go through a couple of channels. Uh, you may have to do a little bit of research online and see who your actual person is locally that can get this fixed in the system for you. Keep in mind that this could take a couple of weeks, so you may have to do some research in advance to see who this person is if you are in a newer area and make sure you get that address rectified in their system. So I'll put in the new zip code and we'll go to the next screen here. And see now it's validating that address. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit confirm. And then it's gonna prepare the module further. Uh, it should register the phone and give me a number here in just a second. And it's asking you know, for an installation survey on how we liked it. And you can see there's already an update for the phone. So we're just going to go ahead and get to this next screen here. You can see it assigned a number to the phone. It's assigned to a person and it already has an update. So this was pretty straightforward as far as initial configuration. We're going to go ahead and update the phone and it prompts you and it just goes through the update screen. If you've done any updates on any other unified devices like the APs or switches, uh, you're pretty used to this. It looks very similar. And that was one of the reasons I was saying if you're already part of the ecosystem for Unify, this may be a no-brainer, especially if you're using it for a small business. It's already there and you just basically have to turn it on and register a device. So again, should be a pretty straightforward setup for those of you who already knows how this looks. So let's go ahead and take a look around. Uh, we're going to click on numbers and here you can see the numbers that you have in your Unify talk system which user they're assigned to and device. You can reassign them. You can go ahead and set up a switchboard. You have call logs in here, a couple of different options. You can set up the switchboard based on how many uh, employees or users you have. Uh, again, I suggest one to 10 for more so small business. Uh, medium and large, you may need some additional infrastructure in place. And again, that would probably well more than exceed the, the scope of uh, this uh, video series. So here you can see the different users you have assigned and in the Unify system. And I'm pretty sure this carries over to the uh, Unify access system as well. And then you have groups which you can assign uh, a single phone number to be shared across multiple devices. So like a hunt group for example, uh, if you wanted to have like a call group for different answering. Then you have your general settings. This looks a lot more like the natural uh, unified ecosystem. Uh, we've seen some, we've seen a couple of things with the APs where this looks very similar, but you can turn on things like enable automatic call recording, which would save it to your call log. But again, I'm pretty sure you'd have to have a very large hard drive for that. You can able, enable voicemail. Uh, you can go into advanced settings and uh, SIP by Unify is already enabled. But you have a couple of other options here in case you wanted to manage your SIP providers or add a different SIP provider other than Unified Talk. So it does give you some options uh, where you can access the command line. We'll talk about that more in the coming videos. Um, and it, it tells you right here, um, you can use FS underscore CLI uh, for free switch command line. So this is based on free switch. Uh, when we go back to the dashboard, we can see just a basic uh, overview of how things are set up as far as outbound calls, answered calls, voicemails, so on and so forth. So it's very feature rich, although it's very user friendly. And if we wanted to add a subscription, we would click here where it says manage subscription and then go to the unified.ui.com website. That would take us to the point where we could apply for a subscription uh, based on how many phones we wanted to, to set up. We're going to go back to devices because uh, Looks like we still have an update that's going through. You can tell by the amber indicator next to the UTP flex. So since that update will probably take a while, let's go ahead and skip ahead a little bit and we'll show you how to set up the smart attendant and to do uh, groups per se as far as a uh, smart attendant passing the calls. So now we have a couple of users set up and here in the user menu, you can add a user if you choose. Here's the dashboard where you can see the different uh, call statistics. 
Here's the devices. We covered this before that UTP Flex is still uh, doing what it needs to do. So I'm going to go ahead and go down uh, to the next, next tab here. So Smart Attendant is what we're going to look at next. For your Smart Attendant, you can give it a name, uh, and the name's kind of arbitrary. But from here, we'll just call our, our Smart Attendant Doug. From here, you can set up different groups. Uh, and this is slightly different from the Hunt Group, but you can assign numbers to these different groups. You can do an automatic generated uh, recording. You can record a, a message, or you can uh, upload one. Now, from this section, you can do your voice prompts whenever a user calls. So yes, you can set up hunt groups, but from here, you can actually direct the calls to those different hunt groups. So, for example, when someone calls in, they would press one for sales, and then you can say two for, let's say, marketing. And then we can select the users or groups here. And since we only have one group, we'll just assign them both to that person. And here you can see the tree, the call tree. So when someone calls in, they'll get the voicemail or the voice prompt, which would basically say you've reached whatever you wanted to say and press one for sales, press two for marketing. So something like that and you can you can break this down a little bit further if you need to but that's just to show you guys just the initial setup okay everybody now that we have the general system set up we will begin looking at some of the features in the next few videos that I think will make this a powerful VoIP system especially for someone who may be new to VoIP or that doesn't have a large IT budget but who wants to get the, their business off the ground at a low entry point as always, hopefully you found the video informative. If you like to see content like this, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications. Not only will it help the channel grow, it will help other content creators by showing the YouTube algorithm what videos are getting responses. At the time of this recording, only 4% of the 4,000 viewers this month are subscribed, and we are really getting close to that 1,000 subscriber mark. Anyway, we'll see you all in part two where I'll show you how to set up a third-party SIP device and access your voicemail from it. See you on the next one. Later.